long day. I got a lot to say. It feels like I'm carrying a two-ton weight. I go to see a friend. Hello, I'm Monsignor Patrick Winslow, and I am Father Matthew Cowd, and we are speaking from the rooftop. A podcast brought to you by Ten Books, in which we invite you to join our conversation out here in the open air. Where we look out upon the world around us from the rooftop of the church and share with you what we see. Makes me wanna scream from the rooftop to the screen. Well, hello again. Hello, Father Winslow. Good to be with you. And you. Well, wonderful. So, what shall we talk about today? Well, I actually was going to punt that to you since last time <laughs> I began um, really? talking about habits um, and habituation with the guys coming back from seminary, if memory serves. And so I thought maybe I'll yield the floor uh, to your perspicacious mind and you can, oh, you can begin to... My goodness. Well, all right. How about we do this? How about we offer constructive advice, especially since you know uh, people have set upon New Year's resolutions that we've talked about before, um, ways in which uh, we can be effective in developing uh, the type of habits we want to cultivate to help strengthen the muscles that need to be strengthened. And I think that over the course of years, we've had some experience with human formation Mm -hmm. in the seminary program. You immersed in with a mix of a lot of men me with a with a handful relative to the guys that are entrusted to me in formation, but also I think in our work with people and the faithful parishes. and parish environments, uh, where we're doing much the same thing. Mm-hmm. And what struck me also, uh, just as another note, as a side to this, is that parents, this is what they do day in day out. Right, they're forming children. Right. They're forming these. I, I don't want to just say souls because they're bodies as well, but these people. Um, and they're forming them in so many profound ways. It is a huge responsibility. Uh, and I think that we we could do better in articulating, I think, broadly from the pulpit to parents that we priests understand this massive responsibility that you have in shaping and raising your children. Because we are trying to help everyone in that congregation not just the children but the but the adults and mm-hmm. the elderly alike do the same through the course of their life that ongoing human and spiritual formation that has to take place over the archetype and of course education and that parents are doing that very attentively uh and are dealing with all sorts of challenges from the culture around us but also to the particular circumstances of any given child and whether they be health or otherwise there's a lot going on there. So props to all moms and dads, respect to all moms and dads, because we get it. This is a huge responsibility. So I think some of the things that we could offer, maybe talk about, touch upon not only uh, how to cultivate and form ourselves, but how we can be even more successful in cultivating and shaping the, the lives of others. I would throw out this. I think that oftentimes... We start too big. Mm -hmm. This is, I think you know exactly where I'm going with this. We took, you know, and to use an exercise analogy, we took, we put too much weight on the bar. When we decide that something needs to be addressed, we throw, you know, hundred pound weights on, on both ends. And we say, we're going to do, you know, you know, 12, uh, 12 repetitions and three sets of the, no. You know, I can't get this thing off my neck, right? <laughs> this is just, and then we just walk away. I had this up. image of you lifting 245 pounds, which would it be 100 pound weights yes. with the bar. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I don't see that even coming <laughs> off the bar. <laughs> well, y- your defective imagination, uh, Clary's giving the better of you. No doubt I could do it with one arm. But that, all that said, no, it's true though. I mean, I think people throw too much away. You, really have to, whether it's yourself or you're advising others, start in a focused kind of way, smartly, in a focused kind of way, to start to build muscle where there may not be much, right. which is where all the weakness kind of flows right. from. I mean, if you want to pick up on that, but um, 
I think that one of the first problems that we have is we start too big. And as a practical example, oh, I'm going this year, I'm going to lose weight. Everyone does that. So I'm not going to eat more than 800 calories a day. Right. Well, you're going to go from what? 3,500 calories a day to 800? Yeah, good luck. It's yep. likely not going to happen. Yep. That will end. And then you'll be worse off than when you started because you'll end up with a defeatist attitude. Because right, you fail. Yeah. Right? And every time you fail, it just it reignites um, that sense that it's impossible. This is a huge part of, of attempting to, to coach men in the arena of prudence. Because when you go into seminary, um, and, and this is a bit different than the family, but by the time you get to seminary, you have this sense that I'm going to do something great. Like you don't go to seminary because you think, you know, because it's hard to go to seminary and it's, it's not rewarding on the sensate level and it's not something that the world praises. And so it does take a modicum of, of pluck and courage to be able to do so. And so the typical young man that comes in, he's going to, he's going to throw himself at it, at least in his own mind. And he typically bites off more than he can chew, as you say. Um, and you watch it when they first come in. I'm like, he's going to fall. He's going to fall. He's going to mm-hmm. fall. And it's okay. Um, and he's going to become miserable a little bit because... When you have to then I begin... can't be everything I want to be. And right you're away. never... And, but, but you're not doing enough usually for right. them when, you, when they first come in. Mm-hmm. Because they have this image of, of what they must be by the time they get to second semester, first right. year, in terms of their level of sanctity. Um, and basically, sometimes it involves levitation. They think you should be levitating in the chapel. And, and just because I do it... I know, mean that I everyone know. should do it. But in reality, that's not really, that's not <laughs> levitation. We know that there's a, that those are smoke and mirrors. My, my trapeze artist. Uh, exactly. It's, it's yeah. really to keep up your reputation. It is. We um, won't tell people the secrets that you do, but I will out you. The only time I ever saw a saint levitate, by the way, yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you saw it with your eyes. I did. So I was in the, I was in, this is an aside, yeah. uh, levitation is not a virtue you can cultivate. No. It is a gift given by the Holy Spirit yeah. for some, like St. John Cupertino or Solanus Casey. So I was in the crypt church of Santa Chiara Nassisi, and I am beseeching St. Clair to intercede for me on a number of things. And just basically said, it's okay if you want to give me a little sign that you're going to fulfill this request or whatever else. That's and, good of you. And I, exactly. I, I gave her permission, basically, to give me a sign. Um, and one of the things I had in my mind was that maybe she would, like, maybe her body would just sort of lift up a little bit. Because you're right? in front of her. Yeah, I'm in front of her body by myself, completely by myself at that point, and down in the crypt church. And she's laid out there so you can see her body. It's, she has a mask on now, but um, you see her whole body there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you might ask for these things or think that you believe them relative to the saints and everything else, but when something like that actually happens, it's wild and freaky. And so I began to see the body rise up. And I thought my eyes were playing you tricks on me. You never told me this. And so it kept rising. And I'm I, at this point, I am really getting scared. Like, I should never have asked for this. This was ridiculous. What's, what's happening? And then I realized um, that there was actually a sister in there cleaning. And she was behind the body. And she has the same habit on. And so oh. I saw her body <laughs> rising up. <laughs> And so she turned and looked at me and looked at her, and she just sort of waved. And, and so, whew, thank oh, God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, in a way, that was actually... I see. I would interpret that as a sign. I, a I, sign I, I totally right? accept it as a you sign. You did see yeah. her rise. Yeah. So it wasn't inaccurate. Uh, but to answer your question, I think that sometimes families... I've, I've witnessed in seminary, families get a little nervous when their sons go off to seminary because they're going to be a reflection of the formation that they did. And they're nervous about that. Yeah, meaning Thinking the parents are the concerned. Parents are concerned that, that any flaws will be exposed. Any flaws, any any inadequacies. And that they didn't do a good enough. Job. Whether it's in their yeah. education or their manners or their whatever, um, and they can either become defensive or they can become embarrassed. And one of the things I I tell them, and I didn't do this in the beginning, and I should have. I, I wasn't smart enough to figure this out until I had felt some of this for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But to have a little parent orientation in the beginning to say, listen, what you just said, I get it. I didn't get I didn't have to do all the remedial stuff. And so I'm not I'm not at this stage trying to judge family of origin. Right. I'm a bit of a finishing school. I mean right. if he got into seminary, he's a good guy. <laughs> right. And you are they're above average. Yeah, they're ahead level. of the curve as we say, yeah. right? Um 
And so the first thing that has to happen with whether you're working with your children and your family or whether or not it's the seminary, um, I believe, is just helping a guy to see. You're just helping a guy to see who and what he really is. That kind of self-knowledge. So no more fronts, no more lies, um, no more make-believe. I just want to see who you are. And I want you to see who you are. Um, is that, that That is so hard to do, whether it's in formation or whether yep. you're a parent. Yep. Because, one, we get caught up into it. Yep. So if if there's a fault, it's manifested in our direction. Yeah. Then sometimes we want to strike back, you know? Yep. Same thing with parents, right? Absolutely. You want to punish the kid. Uh, you want to just say, you did wrong, slap the hand, you know, time out, yep. whatever the case may be. But not saying that, that punishing, I'm, not, I'm being agnostic on that front. But I think what you're articulating is something that's a, a higher response, which is seeing what the core issues are. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. Seeing clearly. Who are what, you? What the child is struggling with. What are those subterranean habits that you didn't know you had that everyone else sees? Yeah. Where do they come from? Do you want to hone that thing in a different way? Do you want to, um, as it were, begin to to uh, to shave that down and reshape that particular response to reality? Do you think that you you have gifts that you don't have? Do you not recognize the ones that you do have? Um, and then when it comes to deficiencies and sins, what's the plan? Like how, as you were saying earlier, how are we actually going to go about? Once you see yourself with some accuracy, um, then you can actually set about saying. Okay, I need to do this. So right. if, if I put, think that I'm 100, skinny, 100 pounds on the bar, right. you start small. Right. And, or, or in the opposite, you know, like we can look in the mirror and think, yeah, because because we sort of like <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and suck it all in. We think, I'm not looking too bad. I'm right, still, right, I'm right, still right. holding my own. And then, then you yeah. see a shot of yourself when you weren't trying to, you weren't posing. Yeah. You're like, wow, that's very unflattering. That's why I hate peripheral vision. I hate I hate peripheral vision. I and hate mirrors, photographs mirrors at this point. Mirrors, they're, they're not my friends anymore. No, no. Um, but it's to see you as you are. Yeah. Um, and if you know that you've got this deficiency, okay, what's the best way of going about it? So one of the things I, I experience a lot in seminary too is that guys will attack the wrong thing. Like they'll attack something that's sort of accidental or inconsequential. Mm. Like I'm not going to smoke anymore. Missing the mark. Or I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not saying anything yay or nay about right. smoking. It's just that they've got a huge character flaw, and that's not it. That's it. That yeah. one we can work on. But you may not want to work on that plus these other three things that are really large right. at the same time. Because then all of a sudden, yeah. you're you're bereft of everything. Oh, yeah. So that the same thing, you know, we should probably at some point talk about this also relative to Lent, which well, that, is coming oh, that not is too around long the corner. But, you know, I think, you know, so I'm trying to relate it to a parent. So how do you take, whether it's a smaller child uh, or a teenage child, you know, the defenses go up. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cute sometimes with the younger kids. I didn't do that. You know, the, I know. the denials immediately. The not mil- me of Bill Keen. Do you remember that family circle? No, no. So the, hey, Bill Keen was a cartoonist for Family okay. Circle, which is probably still around. Yeah, I kind of remember He's that. He's a brilliant cartoonist, but... Mm-hmm. It's a normal family with several kids. Mm -hmm. And when the dad will see everything in the house disheveled, broken, not put away, spilled, whatever, he will say, who did this? And all the kids will say, not me. Mm -hmm. And so he always drew into the cartoon this little ghost that was running away from the house. And Mm -hmm. on his chest was written, not me. Not me. (laughs) Someone else did it. But you know, with kids, even scripture says this, they feel nagged. and so oftentimes their reaction to correction, yeah. uh, which ultimately we're trying to get them to see so that they have, so if they can see it, that they can begin to fight it, um, is just feeling nagged or picked on. And they translate that into, well, you don't love me, or they feel like I'm being picked on. And it kind of goes into a different, you know, in, into a, you know, down a different road. Uh, or I can never do anything right. Uh, mom and dad, you're, you're always on my case. Uh, that kind of thing, it's that's a hard thing to peel back and say, no, actually, 
I, I want you to be able to see this. And especially if you are irate, right? Because sure. maybe they did something to the other kid and you're sure. angry about it. Or maybe they did something that uh, costs a lot of money. You know, they broke the television or, you know, broke a mirror or a window. And you're, you're angry about it. But that is probably not the best moment mm. to try to help them see the thing that they need to work on. Yeah. Would you agree? Well, I think we should probably go offline here and unpack some of your issues that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Actually, I, mean, I, I, think, I, think both, I think both my mother and my father would welcome the continued uh, formation in my life. <laughs> they would not feel impugned in any oh, way. I just think that, I think that it's true. I mean, I would totally agree with you relative to if your child is of an age where understanding is possible. I don't, I'm not suggesting that we try to make the three-year-old understand. Right, right, right. Um, those so sorts much of do. situations where you simply need to, to, to correct, correct, but, but correct in that way in which it's firm and yet there's no absence of, of love. It's just right. firm. Like this is reality. Cause sometimes I notice I watch families a lot. Um, and whenever I go to dinner or whatever else, and I watch the way they parent and everything yeah. else. And I'm trying to always pick up stuff because some of them really fascinate me. Some of them are really good at it. That so much more patience that I would have and so yeah. much more attentiveness than I would have. And sometimes I watch them um, and I hear the kid and the kid's got a great defense. And the kid is not being honest. Yeah, Like their defense is incredible. It's impassioned. Yeah. And they feel nagged or unloved or anything like you say. But none of that's true. No, right. that's true at all. <laughs> Watch right. to see if the parent folds by that manipulation or they just calmly stay the course. It, and this is one of the, I think, the traps that everybody can fall into, and you can see it with parents, is that they feel an, an inherent obligation to be a just judge. Yeah. Especially when it has to do with kids. Yeah. Uh, more than one kid, you know, you're, you're looking at all sorts of things. And you're trying to put on balance and, and make judgments about something that happened or didn't happen and you're and you're trying to be just judge or equity with respect to you know who gets what who gets what and as the much as outcome <laughs> yeah and so as much as i also have that same instinct i i think it's worth the while in attempting to see it differently yeah. than being the just judge but maybe to shift the frame of mind and thinking to what does this Child soul need? need? Absolutely. Um, Which is a better understanding of equity anyway, injustice. It, it is. And then maybe, you know, maybe injustice, uh, the child, you know, okay, should get an equal size piece of cake. But the circumstances were that the child didn't get an equal size piece of cake or brownie or whatever. Okay. So is that the real issue? Or... Is there's this child, is there something deep, more deeply going on? Is there an incapacity to be generous? Mm -hmm. Is there an incapacity or, or a, a lacking of a sufficient cap capacity to be generous? A lacking of a sufficient capacity to let small things be small and move right, on. Right, right, right. Like there are more things at play than the equity question. Absolutely. And uh, it's hard, no doubt, uh, especially when you want to be fair to all your children and uh, uh, but this is sort of a new phenomenon, I think, um, insofar, I'm not you, but I don't remember my parents ever even attempting necessarily to be uh, fair in that sense. Like if I would say to my dad, yeah, yeah. that's not fair, it, the response was always the same. Whoever said life was fair. Well, yeah, something along those lines. <laughs> uh, well, it's, or, you know, just say. Like, and I'm not saying that was the right response. Is, yeah. But I, was, we just tend to overcorrect all the time. Yeah. And so now parents are attempting to A, explain everything, mm -hmm. um, which, okay, it's better than because I said so. Right. But sometimes they lose their firmness. Then you kind of go to the just judge mode, right? Because now everyone's going to litigate. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I think, not the best position. Either not because, the best position. Because really what it comes down to is forming each one of them. And yeah. they all need probably something slightly different based upon what they're bringing to the table. Right. Circumstantially and inherent, yep. inherent to their character. All right, so... Well, since um, we've solved all that. Since we solved all of that, of course, uh, it, I can I can thank God that I'm not in the position of a parent in yeah, God bless that you all. sense. Uh, Grateful we, to my own parents. We pray for <laughs> exactly, but at the same time, we are we are fathers. Yeah, and so we are doing this more broadly than with um, smaller children. We are doing this, and the children come to us. Uh, we don't necessarily 
uh, invade their lives. You know, yeah. people, the family of the church doesn't have to avail themselves of the fathers, if you will. But we are here, and that's one of the things we try to do and help with. So we do have some common and parallel experience in the family of the church as they do in the family of moms and dads in their homes. Indeed. So, all right, so before we go then, I'm not sure if you have a thought. Well, I just have to say that I have been working on a new um, thing that has worked for me. We're always talking about how to organize our lives and reduce the amount of noise um, Mm. and waste, as it were, relative to, give you one example. My favorite way to learn, everyone's different. My favorite way to learn something is to write it, to hand write it. Nice. When I read a book or if I'm studying something or if I'm trying to put together a class to handwrite it. The problem is I lose my handwriting. Uh, uh, I love my, I have nice handwriting yeah. well enough, but, but I lose the papers. Yeah. So they're just all over the place. And I'm never going to organize them ever. In yeah. the, the rest of I've tried for 10 years, Takes 20 work. years. Yeah. I won't do it. Yeah. So I moved to the computer, but I don't like typing. I don't like reading off you. a computer. I, when I go to the class with computer notes, I never look at them. Yeah. And so I found this, you probably have all heard about these various new devices that basically act like a notebook, mm. but it, it's only handwriting. Mm. You just write things. It can convert it into text if you want, but I won't give it's you a, a brand or anything else, but there's different kinds out there. It's like a tablet it's, with a pen. It is, and it's you can't access the internet. It, it throws it to a cloud so you don't lose it. As soon as you write something, it's, it's there. But does it feel like a pen? It feels just like a pen. All right, now I'm in And you can choose pen... Calligraphy pen, pencil, and when you have a pencil, you can even hear it. Scratch. Are you writing on paper? You're writing on a screen, but the screen is not backlit. It looks like a piece of paper, and it feels like a and pen on it, paper. It's a, it's a glorified etch a sketch, quite oh. frankly. But it's it's immediate, and you can even erase with the back of your pen, All right. and it goes away. I um, will try this. I'm just saying, for I'll me, it's finally working. Because I have tried the various methods that have worked for you and because you have a much more diverse amount of things to maintain and take care of. Yeah. I didn't have that many diverse things, so it didn't quite work for me. Yeah. Um, and I've tried lots of different methods. But this thing I have finally found, it's fantastic. And their motto um, is kind of getting out of the way of your brain. Like remove social media, remove the internet. You can't go look anything up. It's no, there's no distractions. It's you and a piece of paper basically. Mm. But it organizes it for you and saves it. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Now I need to see this. Was that a Christmas gift? Uh, to, or, my, to myself. <laughs> to yourself. Nice. Post Christmas, I waited till after. All right. But I knew I was going to do this to to try to uh, to organize my life in the, in, in 2023. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. You no, know, on my end, I would just sim- like to simply say that I received a Christmas gift from my brother this year, which is a sweatshirt, which has from the rooftop on it. Are you kidding me? The first merch. The first merch. The first merch. We got to get into that. Oh, I like swag. Oh, heavens. But yeah, so I haven't worn it yet, but it's hanging in my closet. But I was going to bring it today okay. so that you could see it. Um, I want to see it. It, it doesn't have, uh, the, it just, you know, it's, it's just uh, embroidered. That's cool. Uh, from the rooftop using it, I think. That's pretty cool. But yeah, so I need to show it to you. Well, we were just in D.C., you know, a bit a little while ago, and we were talking, I was talking with uh, someone, and he, he said to me, Shouldn't you guys go back up and do a show from the original roof? And I thought, we'd have to break in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we should probably try to do it at some should. point. We probably can't even get out those windows anymore. Oh, we could. We're not that flexible. <laughs> airlift. We'll get an airlift. All right, then. God bless you all. Have a yes. great week. Ciao now. Makes me Thanks for listening to this episode of From the Rooftop. For updates about new episodes, special guests, and exclusive deals for From the Rooftop listeners, sign up at rooftoppodcast.com. And remember, for more great ways to deepen your faith, check out all the spiritual resources available at tanbooks.com. And we'll see you again next time. From the Rooftop. Rooftop.